Top of the evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Norm. And I'm Vince. And uh, tonight we're going to do a, a little one-off episode of uh, Truth Noir, see how it goes. Um, we're doing a little bit of uh, restructuring in the personnel department, and uh, glad to have you here with us tonight, Vince. Thank um, you. I'm glad know, to be uh, here. I know uh, we've uh, we've talked at length before on a couple of occasions. Absolutely. Um, you know, with regards to uh, some of the topics that have been going on in the show recently and um, so yeah I just figured uh, I know uh, a lot of people probably are already familiar with you I know you have a couple other shows that you do on here but uh, hey if, this is cool man if any if anyone is uh, uh, not met Vince yet I'll uh, go ahead and let him uh, introduce himself he's sure. probably gonna do a better job than I can <laughs> okay um, well uh, my name is Vince Eckert um, I'm I'm a, a writer and a, a director I do a, a show here on uh, drone box but uh, Generally, I guess I'm just a, an all-around um, public intellectual or something like that, as, as weird a term as that is. Um, but, you know, that's, that's what I'm about, and I think that's, that's probably enough. Now we can, you know, sort of hear, hear about ideas and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, if you haven't tuned in uh, yet, we uh, are, uh, you know, still playing with formats, uh, you know, getting, uh, getting a little bit of the, the backdrop squared away. But basically... Um, what Truth Noir is, is an attempt to um, sort of shed some light on the um, kind of weird things that uh, go on in the news that get reported that don't really get a satisfactory answer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's uh, planes falling out of the sky with, uh, you know, that no one's able to find them. Uh, I'm interested to, to hear <laughs> what you think, what you have to say about the missing plane. Uh, but we can talk about that, you know, whenever. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to like, you know, kind of get a a couple little, uh, you know, things out there as far as like, you know, just kind of weird stuff, you know, election results that seem like they've gone decidedly one way, and then it's like all of a sudden, oh wait, no. We've seen that happen here in America. Yeah, right, and you know, it's. It, it's a thing, like all of the stuff that, you know, when we were, uh, you know, teenagers or young adults, I mean, not that we're old necessarily, but, uh, you know, all of the stuff that we were like, oh, that kind of weird, corrupt stuff goes on in other countries, mm -hmm. and, you know, it doesn't happen here. We, we have freedom and we, uh, you know, our vote matters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like with the end of the Cold War, that kind of thing, um, you know, it really sort of came home to roost, uh, you know. Um, it, it, it's like uh, w with no sort of um, out enemy to focus on, um, the U.S. government has sort of like shifted to controlling things at home, so to speak. Um, and I mean, you know, they're busy in the Middle East, but, you know, uh, still to a lesser extent than they were with Russia, you know, uh, prior to the 1990s. It seems like a lot of the same technology is at work, too, with the... Um um, you know, certain um, methods of convincing people that these uh, things that are going on are, are just and, and even like getting angry when people say, you know, that something might be a little bit amiss, that you, sure, know, you, sure. get, you get called a, uh, you know, freedom hating, you know, something or other that, you know, and, uh, it's a, it's a with us or against us mentality. Yeah, my country, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was one thing that uh, I have a couple books by George Orwell here that I, I'm going to, uh, hopefully, if time allows, we'll review a little bit later. But he was a big proponent of um, the methodology methodologies by which people are convinced that these horrible things that uh, their governments are doing are just and... Um, and even to be applauded, mm -hmm. you know, and celebrated. And uh, so one, one of these uh, things that uh, I wanted to bring up is, um, this is a quote from our, uh, our you know, now uh, <laughs> favorite uh, propaganda minister. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> we've, uh, uh, we've, from the Nazi regime. We, uh, yeah, we've, we've uh, gone over and over his uh, stuff a couple times so far. But, uh, you know, to bring it up again in a little bit, uh, you know, more uh, time conducive way. Um, he uh, he was the propaganda minister, um, or or what Orwell would have called the Ministry of Truth, mm -hmm. right? Where they manufacture lies to convince people that uh, these horrible things are the way they've always been. 
And what he said was, naturally the common people don't want war, neither in Russia, nor in England, nor in America, nor for that matter in Germany. Mm -hmm. That is understood, but the people can always be brought to the bidding of their leaders. That much is easy. All you have to do is tell them they are being attacked and denounce the pacifists for lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger. It works the same way in any country. Mm. And uh, you know, I, I kind of feel like that uh, that it wasn't just the Germans, as it turns out, that uh, you know, were the German citizenry that mm -hmm. were. Uh, victims of this, um, it, you know, it, we've seen it happen in other places. We've seen, um, you know, revolutions start up and new leaders be installed that, you know, just so happen to have our exact interests at heart oh, with yeah. regard to natural resources and. Well, the interesting thing, sort of about about reality or the perception of reality, is that it's sort of um, or people's perception of reality. I mean, I like to think that there is s sort of reality outside one's mind, but sure. you know, um, <laughs> you'd that, like that's to debatable. think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, we, we could we could be here all night uh, talking about philosophical truths, but um, my point is that uh, reality or people's perceptions of reality is basically just like a stack of narratives, and it's like um, whoever has sort of uh, the most convincing stories is tends to be the one that wins out, even if um, it doesn't really sync up with facts. Uh, like um, sort sort of the the, the great and um, sort of enduring thing about uh, propaganda. Uh, is that it's really just um, a well-told, convincing story, uh, rhetorically um, rather well-told, usually. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, that, that um, gives people something that sounds um, like a good way to make sense of things, because life is very confusing. And sure. Well, yeah, and, and you have, like, even in religious iconography, you know, you have these stories that are, are written in very metaphoric, very poetic language mm -hmm. that having a picture of it is is very helpful. Oh yeah. You know, in a lot of um, you know, in a lot of places where the literacy rate is not high, um, these uh, messages, these pieces of uh, information are best transmitted through pictures um, to help communicate whatever it is that you want to communicate to people. And one thing that I was reading recently is uh, this uh, this book, it's it's called very simply Mind Programming mm -hmm. by uh, Eldon Taylor. I haven't checked that one out. What's it all about? It's uh, it's pretty excellent. I, I thought it was just you know like some kind of nonsense self help <laughs> you know, yeah, at yeah, first. Okay. Um, and and there, I can't know, program my VCR with all my mind. Like, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> well, here's how. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, but he actually does a very good job of uh, going into the history and the science of these, um, the research of these methodologies of subliminal information transmission. Mm -hmm. And he actually has the distinction of testifying uh, a, as an expert witness during the uh, trial that occurred in the 1980s where the Banjus priest was uh, charged with the, um, in, um, I don't know how to say, it, it was the subliminal messages in one of their albums oh, that yeah. encouraged and it, it's happened with other musicians as well like Ozzy Osbourne was one supposedly of them. supposedly the the Beatles if you play something backwards it says Paul is dead right right yeah well this one was more of a uh, kind of like pro suicide oh, message okay. and or uh, and so the um, so these two kids that were friends um, basically the one watched the other kill himself and then killed himself uh, while they were both reciting the lyrics to this song. Wow. Now, uh, Dr. Taylor's um, testimony was that, yes, in fact, that those subliminal messages are perceptible to the human brain. Now, where the judge ruled against his testimony mm -hmm. was that the evidence was not clear enough as to how much um, that subliminal messaging had to do with them doing what they did. Yeah, Both yeah. of these kids came from broken homes and it was around the holidays and it was the middle of winter in northern latitudes and they didn't have a lot of sun during that time. And all, all contributing factors to suicide risk for sure. All, all very valid factors and so the judge ruled that that wasn't 
the the uh, subliminal messaging in the song was not necessarily the main most factor. Interesting. Um, but there's a lot of good information in this book about the uh, the history and the, the by now like trillions and trillions of dollars that world governments have spent and advertising companies have spent um, in their marketing kind of putting these little um, hints, mm -hmm. visual cues in their in their advertisement to elicit some kind of response from you, whether it's buying a soda or voting for a specific person or um, getting all amped up to go to war, whatever it is. Like and the uh, arrow in the FedEx logo. Sure, yeah, we're going to get it to you fast. Yeah, exactly. Or, it um, makes you think a certain thing without even realizing it's there. Right. Or the uh, you know the Amazon kind of implied little smiley face oh, right. arrow, yeah, yeah. very similar thing, and um, so yeah, very interesting book. And uh, and what we are about here is the uh, you know dissemination of information. Um, and if you if you're overwhelmed by all of this stuff, and you know you're like, well, I don't know where to start looking. We we do have a couple of ideas for stuff that uh, you know might uh, help you start understanding some of these forces that are um, that are being used against you mm. right now and, um, and I mean, it's, it's you know it's a uh, particularly um, troubling that a, a lot of people simply uh, choose to ignore these these things um, because you know these they're all these um, sort of uh, ex external forces you know working working on on your unconscious mind at all times um, you know, you're constantly being bombarded with, with stuff. I mean, you know, uh, you go out in the street, there's advertising all over, the buses have stuff on the sides. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the, the Goodyear blimp. Um, right. <laughs> like, skywriting. I mean, like, mm -hmm. everywhere you look, there's these messages. And it's not just in sort of uh, media, but w literally in the, in the, the physical, um, everyday world we live in. There are all these... Uh, Thing, things trying to work on your mind in some way. Yeah, and you know, and it's one of those uh, like, okay, well, you know, do you? It used to be just, well, you know, do you watch TV? Well, mm -hmm. do you listen to the radio? These advertisements, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they do have this effect, and even. But you could shut that off potentially. Right, you can shut that off, but then, but then now it's well, do you go outside? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you, you you can't escape. Do you? Do you, uh, you know, do you ride the bus anywhere? Do you, like, even if you have your own car, you can't help but, like, see billboards Yeah, exactly, everywhere. especially here in the Los Angeles area. They're omnipresent. Yeah. You can't get away from billboards. Concrete jungle has them everywhere. And um, so, yeah, ba you know, there's Honestly, this... Honestly, I'm surprised they don't advertise <laughs> on the ghetto birds already. I know, right? This, <laughs> yeah, this... Uh, That's the next step. This police raid brought to you by... Uh, <laughs> By Alka Seltzer or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a headache from these sirens. Take Alka Seltzer. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, no, brilliant, right? Yeah. yeah. Which, which uh, you know, goes into another uh, sort of uh, self-soliciting response of like this uh, sort of um, imposed problem, created problem, uh, outrage and demand for a solution, mm -hmm. and then an already prepared uh, solution, like. Oh, um, the the uh, twin towers were attacked. Oh my goodness! Now everyone's angry. What do we do about it? Well, now we go over here and we attack these people. Yeah, who who weren't even directly responsible, <laughs> right? Like, like they're just you know sort of affiliated in a way with the people who had done the actual awful deed. Yeah, like they, it's just so it's so spurious. They exist on the same planet, so therefore <laughs> uh, you know guilt guilt by association. I am my brother's keeper, the federal government <laughs> <Right>. edition. <laughs> And so, uh, so yeah, basis. So there's, uh, you know, there's uh, propaganda and all of these types of things at work. And uh, oh, you know what? There's our, there's our girl. Uh, I, we're not quite ready for her yet, though. I wanted to, uh, um, keeping in uh, in line with our uh, propaganda spiel for a second. Um, this is a, a picture that's been plastered up everywhere, and it certainly, uh, you know, is is frightening to uh, behold. Um, what, what, what is that? I'm not, not familiar with this image. Uh, well, this is a, and I forget exactly what group um, she was affiliated with, but it was... Uh, is it ISIS? 
Uh, no, I think this came out a little bit before ISIS. This oh, okay. is probably Al Qaeda. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but yeah, this is it, this is the same kind of propaganda. There's certain little elements to be picked out from it. There's a uh, you know book of scripture. There's a gun. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, uh, some sort of nationalistic symbol behind her. You know, a, a, some kind of flag that. A group of people are rallying behind that is not your own, mm. and um, and and I'm interested to know what that what those symbols mean. Uh, it, well, it means they're coming to get you because you don't believe the same things that they do. No, that, that's for sure. And <laughs> basically, uh, this I, I remember this being you know plastered up all over Fox News, and well, all of the news stations. I don't want to <laughs> discriminate because they are all garbage, but. They were all showing this and, and doing their fair share of fear mongering, and everyone was like, "Oh my God, they're coming to get us! We gotta, gotta do something!" And and it do, was. Do we get Al Jazeera here now? I think we do. Uh, I believe Al Jazeera has a affiliate office. I think it's in New York. And oh, okay. So if you watch the, um, the, uh, PBS, whatever your local PBS affiliate is, it's mm -hmm. usually like one of the point two or point three stations. But they do show world news stations, um, and Al Jazeera is one of them. Al Jazeera America is one of the highest funded American government news networks. Oh, interesting. Really? Yeah. It's a cable news network, and it's mostly funded by AmeriCorps. By AmeriCorps? Like AmeriCorps is different American political Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's, that's, Sign, that's really interesting. That, that ties in rather delivered. well to this whole subject. Um, yeah, and so um, I mean that that the um, the ownership of uh, you know news media sites, at least in America, if not the world, that is a topic for a whole separate episode. Mm -hmm. um, but um, um, so this is uh, basically manufactured. I mean, and I, I don't know. Perhaps it was taken. You know, the photograph might have been taken somewhere in Iraq, but. The way it was presented to us was to elicit a fear response specifically against a, uh, a specific demographic of people. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that was Muslims. All, all Muslims are bad is, is what uh, this is meant to convey. And um, it, and uh, you know, it was pretty effective. I mean, they, they, you know, you can't fool all the people all the time, but you did have a large percentage of the population that had, had that, you know, proper fear response. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, once again, goes back to just you know the sort of propaganda machine. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is, this is precisely the uh, steps um, somebody somebody like Goring would take. Right. Well, I mean, he might have even invented the process. You know, I mean, it was one of those. You know, uh, when Hitler bombed the Reichstag, or, or I'm sorry, had it bombed, mm -hmm. you know, and then blamed it on the communists, it, it was the same kind of, all the communists are, you know, they're terrorists and they're, you know, and so let's lock them all up. Where, whereas really a lot of the communists were just the country's intellectuals, which is uh, another uh, right. interesting yeah, they, point to make. They were the ones saying, hey, watch out for this Hitler guy, he's a nut job. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so yeah, so you lock them up, and it kind of paves the way for uh, you know the end game of that, which was you know frying six million people in ovens. Um, I'm not saying that that's what is uh, you know getting kickstarted here with pictures like this, but it is it does serve its purpose. I think it's a, it's really a matter of control. I mean, uh, you know, aside from. Um, uh, Hitler's uh, particular version of crazy, uh, the reason that they had to get rid of all those people is to take control. I mean, like, uh, the, uh, many of the people who, who you know, they, they slaughtered were people who would have been in opposition to them. Exactly. And, and you know, it can't, it can't be overstated how important it was for the Nazi regime to get rid of those people in order to exist. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, had they not gone through those steps, uh, Hitler's whole thing might have unraveled much sooner, um, and gosh, if only it had, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but then also in creating that vacuum, you also need a person like Goering to step in and fill that void, you know, because people want information, like even if it's false, 
um, you know, so so Goering came in and, and had all of these like ultra nationalistic German back to us this German pride films, you know, going on. Um, but uh, yeah, in in um, in pairing with this, mm -hmm. we uh, we have our own little little uh, bit right here, which is coming up directly. Okay. I hope. Yeah, there we go. There's oh, our girl. Oh, interesting. Yeah, see, it's, you, you see this exact. I same see the correspondence and images. Where, where's this from? Uh, this, I, you know, I, I don't uh, have a source on, but it was another one of those photos that was all over every news media outlet, and uh, you know, it has all the same elements. Down, you know, the the book of scripture, the. Uh, um, you know the the girl ready to kill for God and country with the uh, gun in her uh, you know opposing hand, and um, and then we come to. I wonder why women are being made these these propaganda tools right now. Why what is it about this moment that that makes? I don't know. You think maybe women are supposed to be like the peacemakers, maybe? And if a woman is ready to kill for this, like oh, whoa, whoa get back. Yeah, Maybe yeah. I mean I I don't know but um, but that yeah, is yeah yeah I mean uh, symbolically you know uh, you you associate um, women often with sort of uh, you know uh, nurture and um, you know sort of uh, a way of uh, not war precisely not war the yeah, opposite the of it. opposite of war <laughs> and yeah so so certainly um, there must be some extreme line that has been crossed when the women of your country are now going to pick up arms mm. you know to uh you know to to kill for whatever you know, it is whether it whether it's uh for for um uh, obama or whatever as you assume one is or or for you know al-qaeda or the islamic state as as the one on the right would suggest but i mean yeah it's the same kind of thing sure yeah and uh, and they're and they're both you know as the caption on top of this uh, you know side by side says, explain the difference to me, because they look exactly the same, mm. and you know. Do you think do you think that um, the the image of the uh, American uh, woman um, w would uh, provoke a sort of um, fear or hatred uh, in in you know uh, Middle Eastern people who would see it? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, it's. Uh, it's certainly the same formula, mm -hmm. and so um, yeah, they would probably be just as disgusted with her, with her, uh, you know, exposed arms and you know, long hair showing, and the uh, you know the flag behind her that uh, um, you know represents uh, you know every you know the great Satan or mm -hmm. you know what whatever it is to them, just like the woman in the uh, you know uh, Islamic photo. It elicits everything that is standing against that we're told is standing yeah. against us, you know. So yeah, I would say that it's uh, a very similar. Yeah, and it's just it's just it's just so interesting. Like um, it, you know, when in these these sort of uh, pr propaganda uh, sort of sort of um, images or tools or whatever, you always see um, uh, things being um, broken into like two opposing sides. Most often, you know, it's like. Right us and them always it, there's no there's no it's hardly ever any nuance to it yeah well because there's no room for nuance because you, you you don't want people thinking about it mm -hmm. it's it's a uh, one thing that orwell terms as the two minutes hate where everyone is you know gathered around and the TV, you know, or even in their homes, mm -hmm. because the TV is watching you now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, they they put up the picture of the person or a map of the country that you're supposed to be hating on, and for this period of time, instead of a moment of silence, it's a moment of you know just shouting obscenities at at this image, you know. And uh, and it's one of those like kind of. Yeah, that was a work of fiction, mm -hmm. but you see these same things going on now, and uh, and if you're if you're hit to it, like if you you know read any of these books or if you just kind of look critically at the things that are going on mm -hmm. in the world and the things that you're being asked to believe, you know that like oh all of these all of these people hate you every yeah. single one, and it's like no they probably don't they probably just want to go to school, and um, you know. 
live, live real, rich human lives <laughs> yeah, just, play, just like you know everyone has always done forever yeah play music and uh you know do all of that stuff i mean like something something that i think uh is really necessary to note here is that these sort of tools are are products of um you know uh, in, in industrial and post-industrial society like these sort of large-scale um like propaganda networks didn't really exist before that or if they did it was in a much more limited way I right. mean you could argue um, about about Robespierre and the reign of terror sure um, or uh, you know even even going back to uh, Julius Caesar um, f first putting uh, his face on coins right mm -hmm. um, but at the same time you know th that's amateur hour and compared to this yeah the the science behind it and the resources that have poured into have been poured into the research of it are so insidious for the way they're used. Mm -hmm. Like all, all of this stuff. And one thing that uh, Mr. Taylor says in his mind programming book is that like these these principles and these practices can be used for good. They can be used to unlock, you know, human potential. Yeah. Um, you know, these kind of like self hypnoses of, you know, they can be used um, to you know, if you have a phobia, like some irrational fear, you know, of, um, I don't know, call it old furniture. Like if you're, if you're one of those, like, you know, irrationally afraid of something that would never hurt you, sure. like, you can use like self hypnosis or you can use these subliminal techniques to, um, to, to not feel that way anymore. Yeah. To, I mean, there's also some, uh, efficacy I've heard anyway. Um, in, in terms of uh, really simple mind-body connection stuff. So, for instance, um, hyp hypnosis uh, can help you with um, the removal of, like, warts on your body, for instance. Right, yes, yes. Skin conditions, any kind of illness um, can be, and, and he goes into that too, can be, if not cured entirely, can, can be assuaged a great deal. Mm -hmm by, you know, you can call it the, you know, power of positive thinking or prayer or, um, you know, and it turns out that, like, that that part of it, the religions got right. Like, oh, yeah. that was part of the, the, the uh, you know, spiritual dissemination that um, has turned out to be very, very accurate that, um, you know, prayer, meditation, um, you know, even some of the dietary guidelines, that you know, they've gone back and like, oh, that's kind of, you know that you know, oh well, that's just old stuff that's just the food they had to eat at the time but it was like no they had other stuff to eat but they knew that these certain things were beneficial to the you know mind body and spirit also well, certainly or, or like you know um, Jewish people are uh, discouraged from eating pork right but the the good reason for that is and Muslims as it turns out that is a dietary restriction that they share mm. well I mean you know uh, the very obvious reason for that and and the you know, it makes a lot of sense is because um, if you don't cook pork enough, you could end up seriously ill. And like, you know, just stopping people from eating it is probably a good way to keep the great mass of your people from getting sick. Right. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and even for like the selfish reason for, from a, a ruler's point of view is like, okay, well, if all of these people get sick, no, there's not going to be anyone to build the roads, or yeah, like exactly. nothing, nothing's going to get or done. Cook my food, <laughs> right? <laughs> or like, yeah, because yeah, because I'm certainly not going to do it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, people for all of time um, have have looked to uh, a, a leader, like an earthly leader. I mean, that will never change. Sure. Like, even though um, in in the internet age, things are getting uh, much more. Um, the power is becoming sort of you know, uh, broadly distributed in certain ways. Um, but we're never going to get to the point, in my opinion, uh, where there isn't going to be, at the very least, a figurehead who rules things. Sure, yeah. I mean, and it, that's, it's That's a, just psychology. Yeah, and it's sort of a societal construct that, you know, is... It, and it's like, well, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to make the roads or the plumbing and... and do you no? Oh man! Well, I don't know anyone either. You know, when you put when you have someone in power that uh, you know and, and and establishes a sort of leadership structure, mm -hmm. that's when stuff starts getting done. And there's and there's nothing specifically wrong with that. 
it's uh, it, but it, it's a matter of degrees. Yeah. It's you know I'm going to put my face on coins so that everyone knows that they're part of this kingdom mm -hmm. and and uh, you know I'm the one that organized the building of the roads. You're welcome. You know. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah, I mean that's that that really truly is how mm -hmm. how one cements power. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's this this concept of um, becoming known is is almost like is almost as good as you know uh, taking taking control. I mean, it's, it 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 comes it comes again to this um, thing where ideas are maybe the most powerful weapon there are. For sure. Um, well, yeah, and more so now than ever. I mean, you have uh, you have for the first time in history, you know, probably within like the last twenty years with the advent of the internet, mm -hmm. um, where if you have access to a computer, your phone, an actual PC, um, a library, you know, it turns out now that uh, about eighty percent of the population of the world has the equivalent of the entire compiled knowledge of human history yeah. at their hands. And um, and it's there for you to educate yourself with and there's not a lot of people doing it. There's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of social uh, interaction, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know bickering back and forth between who's uh, you know particular um, well, the the interesting thing I think, and and this is um, where sort of uh, the idea of uh, online colleges I think gets it wrong, is that people don't know how to learn on their own. They sort of have to be taught that over time. Right. And so like once you have that skill, then you can learn anything. Right. But it's like it takes. There's a certain amount of building up that it takes any person to get there. Well, yeah. And then now you know when you have this. Uh, recently, you've had. Uh, online college, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and exactly. So, and so this is where you're targeting people that have already, um, you know, gone through the school system. You assume that they've already gone through the process of learning how to learn, right? But now, and 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 I think this is a, can go either way. You have these um, online homeschooling that is coming up now, where it's like now you're. Uh, you know, elementary school age child can stay at home and um, that's preposterous. I mean, just I'm just yeah, gonna put that I out mean, there. That's that can't work. Yeah, as a parent of a of a of a seven year old and, and a four year old, mm -hmm. just I, I can't see that ever being efficacious for anyone. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, to you know, build like social interact social skills. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of the education system at large, um, it, it, at least on on the public scale. But, but yeah, I mean, I think the the ability for children to interact socially mm -hmm. is one of the last decent things that is going on in the public no, school I, system. I, I agree completely. And it, if you go to public school, as I did, and I'm yeah, me going, too. And, and I'm, you know, my 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 children are going to go to public school as well. I went to a private college, but whatever. Um, I mean, up until high school, I was in a public school, right? My whole life, I went to one. Um, but, you know, the whole point of that is, is just to get to know different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if you were always in a private school your whole life, or, you know, were one of those unlucky people who have to be with their parents and homeschool, um, you don't get those kind of experiences. And so you're not going to become <clears throat> the person that you're supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree. You, you'll probably end up, uh, you know, looking like this fella here. <laughs> <laughs> the tinfoil hat, very nice. Yeah, no, I, I love this guy. He uh, he makes me laugh every time I look at him. And I, I kind of feel, I, I put him in here because I feel like he represents the, uh, the sort of stereotype of the conspiracy theorist mm -hmm. and... Um, Somebody who's, who's borderline schizophrenic. Yeah, prob possibly a shut-in mm -hmm. uh, reading the the super extreme conspiracy blogs, believing that the uh, Queen of England is a reptile. Yeah, yeah, he's the last uh, person with a, with a know, subscription to Fate magazine right. on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like just just the the uh, the person that you know you'd be like, all right, this guy's a whack job. Maybe I should stop asking such jackassy questions because I don't want people to think I'm a person like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And 
it, you know, and it turns out these days that, uh, you know, the conspiracy, the conspiracy theorists are not the people that believe ridiculous things. They're asking questions about um, odd things that happen in the world that the news media, I, I feel purposely, does not do a good job of explaining. Are you, are you familiar with uh, Charles Fort? Uh, no. Uh, so, Charles Fort, um, but I was obsessed with this guy for quite some time. Okay. Um, back in the, uh, he's, he's from upstate New York as well, but he's, you know, about a century before me. Okay. Uh, he, he created um, an, a series of books uh, he referred to as the Book of the Damned. Right. Okay. And Interesting. It, it wasn't that it, this was about damned souls, but what he referred to as damned data. So what he would do is he would comb newspapers from all over the world all the time to pick out things that just didn't make sense, and he compiled them in a book. And I mean, he did this in several books, but the first one, uh, the Book of the Dam. So like, there's all these things. Um, you know uh, that nobody could really explain rains of frogs, uh, the Carrington event when that happened. You know okay. the solar flare, um, which, which uh, I have an interesting theory which links it to SATs. If you ever want to get into that one, interesting. Uh, um, yeah, it turns out I have heard a lot of those things where um, you know these crazy unexplained events, um, you know dead animals falling out of the sky or you know certain. A meteorological phenomena. Yeah, yeah or uh, the the one where um, the uh, it it was like raining blood or something. It was like oh, a yes. dark red. Yep, uh, that's also from something. the book of the damned. Yeah. Okay. You uh, should really check this one out. It's it's on it's online, um, uh, an annotated edition by the uh, the Fortean Society, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, so it's uh, very accessible. It's uh, it's a great work. It's a little. Um, Those are the cryptozoological cryptozoological people, the Fortean sciences. Oh yeah, yeah. They they, they take their name from him. Okay. Um, I mean, he wasn't uh, he wasn't a big proponent of um, of Bigfoot or the abominable snowman or something like that. Although he does. You know, he does record um, those things in in the book, but uh, he, he's uh, he generally um, you know sort of goes to the the more likely explanation. There's probably you know a, an actual large ape that somebody saw or something in, in certain circumstances. Sure. Um, but you know, at the same time, he he collected all these things, so he certainly was thinking about it, and I think that's. Um, I think that's the most important thing to be doing if you're somebody who's uh, skeptical about about what's going on in society. It's like even if you don't buy stuff, you have to uh, you have to think about it. Well, yeah, and that's yeah, and that's that uh, you know breeds right into you know my uh, um, tinfoil hat man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know these there there are people out there now and. You know, we're, we're trying to place ourselves amongst their ranks that are just concerned citizens looking for the answers, mm -hmm. you know, to, um, you know, all of these weird things that are happening. And um, so, yeah, another uh, another one of these, I, I feel like we've beaten propaganda <laughs> into right, the ground. Please, please move on. <laughs> but uh, uh, so this one is uh, a, a picture basically of the uh, military industrial complex. Okay. As uh, as it existed in World War One, I, I believe is where uh, this time period where the, yeah, this photo was the, from. Yeah, that's definitely a World War One period. I mean, the the, the gas mask, um, the, you know. Yeah, guys on horses. Still. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so basically, what the military industrial complex? Did they ha even have cavalry in World War Two? I don't think so. I, I'm sure if they did, it was very limited. Maybe like in uh, the North African area. Yeah, yeah, maybe, where there was just and, no way to have you know maybe, armored vehicles or and whatever. Maybe in certain parts of Asia. Um, but yeah, basically, what the term um, military-industrial complex relates to is the the almost complete consumption of a country's resources to make implements of war. Mm -hmm. so and that's what Washington in this farewell address. Washington warned about it after the revolution. Eisenhower, the, the um, you know, supreme commander of the uh, Atlantic uh, Allied forces mm -hmm. in World War II, uh, they warned us against the continuing military escalation of this uh, you know, industrial complex. 
because what do you have here? You have, um, you know, I mean, obviously this is just one guy on a horse, but you need to breed millions of horses. You need to take all of the textiles that your country produces and you need to make millions of uniforms and you need to cut down a bunch of trees to make that, uh, that long staff that he's holding to spear people from his horse and make the stocks of your guns and, uh, you know, all of these, you know, just every resource in the country, the bullets for his, you know, for his gun or for their guns. And then when you have a bunch of countries on the earth doing this and firing them off at each other, um, it, you know, that, that's not a, it's not a conducive, uh, it's not a way to run your society that's conducive to you know, spiritual growth or societal growth, you know, you're just, you're just continuing to destroy stuff at, uh, you know, odd periods of time. And uh, our great military leaders warned us against this. Um, and, and, and they're the ones we respect too, right? Like George Washington and uh, Eisenhower, these were people that won wars. One of them founded a country. Yeah. One of them helped win World War II. I mean, II. <laughs> you know, you look, at, you look at Washington. He could have been dictator for life. And yeah. he chose not to do that. It, absolutely. I mean, you know, he, he, he saw the, um, the, the problem of, of control, you know, of, of um, you know, somebody, somebody uh, tightly regulating society. And he didn't want that for America. Right. And, and you know, it, it's... it's um, really tragic in, in the sense that we've come to that point that, you know, uh, Washington foresaw at the beginning of the country, like that, you know, these, these things might spiral out of control and this uh, kind of forever war mentality would take hold. I mean, that's exactly the kind of things that he didn't want to happen. Yeah. It, in fact, it was the exact opposite. Yeah, yeah. He's like, we're Almost gonna... precisely. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and so... So you have this industrial, military industrial complex, and then what do you do? You have all of these, uh, you know, you have all of these bombs and airplanes, like all of this stuff that you could have like, you know, spent all that money sending kids to college for free or saying, hey, everyone don't trip about your medical expenses anymore. Yeah. We, we made all of this military equipment now. We made all the planes and all the bombs. And then now what's going to happen? Oh, we haven't had a war for 10 or 15 years. All of that stuff's going to start falling apart soon. We better use it. Mm -hmm. And so, but like, 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 uh, you know, Herman Goering said, naturally the people don't want war. You have to convince yeah. them of it. And so how do you do that? You do that with, uh, with what we call a false flag event. And so what that is, is, uh, the term is derived from the uh, military practice of, at times, flying false colors, false mm -hmm. flags, are when governments and other organizations carry out covert operations to deliberately blame others for the atrocities in order to mobilize military intervention and prioritize regime change, um, and also to gain public support for all of these things. And so, uh, just like Hitler did with, uh, you know, the bombing of the Reichstag, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and many other times in the past. And I would argue that, like, I think 9-11 was a false flag, you know. It's very possible. I mean, there's, uh, there's definitely evidence that suggests that some arms of, of, you know, the intelligence agencies run by the U.S. government were aware that this was going to take place. Although, you know, the, I, I think you would have to be... Um, you would have to be quite, uh, you would have to be, um, I don't know, you'd have to take a really negative view of things to say that everyone knew about it or something like that. I think there were only certain factions which knew this would happen um, or ha were tipped off about it and purposely chose not to alert those who could have prevented it. Right, yeah, and uh, well, what you have for, uh, for the kind of meat and potatoes of this is you had a you had military practice operations mm -hmm. going on at that exact time and so when the information came through that oh planes have been hijacked they ignored it because they thought it was part of the war game scenario right and so uh when there there was a tube station in uh britain or spain mm -hmm. um in fact there it happened in both places and both times 
it was the same scenario. There were military practice operations going on. And so that's what kind of leads me to believe that some of these things were, that all of them were false flags, obviously not orchestrated by the same person, mm -hmm. but... Um, Just using the same methodology. Yeah, very much coming from the same playbook. Mm -hmm. And they were all places that uh, ended up supporting America in our war against terrorism. <laughs> Jeez, when, it's, it's a surprise there, huh? When there was a kind of <laughs> tepid response to it. Everyone was like, oh my God, we're really sorry this happened. But, but nations of the world were hesitant to... Um, Involve themselves in yeah, what, to what involve ended up being a, an all-out war. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, against several countries in the Middle East. I mean, you know, uh, they were rightly hesitant, uh, as it turns out. Yeah, because there ended up not being uh, weapons of mass destruction anywhere where we looked for them. Even oh, of after, course. Even after we had obliterated the centers and walked in and looked unopposed. Oh, oh, geez, there's no enriched uranium here, huh? Oh, they must have taken them with them. Though. Yeah, right? <laughs> right. Every, every, everybody's <laughs> loading up the canisters and enriched uranium to the truck. Quick, quick, before they get here. Yeah, get it out of here now. <laughs> move, move. They're going to find it. <laughs> and uh, so, um, but yeah, and then we have these, uh, you know, this sort of, uh, and this is what worries me. Uh, you know, is with all of this stuff about Jade Helm. Oh, yes. It's coming up this summer, out, right? Yeah. I, well, I believe it's already started in certain areas. And so for anyone not familiar, um, Jade Helm is a series of uh, military exercises that will be going on in various uh, locations throughout the uh, American Southwest. Yeah. Including Southern California, Arizona, Nevada, uh, New Mexico, Texas, I believe, um, possibly other places as well. But, um, you know, so the, all of that stuff is being planned. And to me, that sounds like the start of uh, another false flag event where, oh, we have these military operations going on and we didn't, re we didn't take it seriously when a piece of information came in that uh, you know this attack was being planned because we just thought it was uh, you know part of the scenario mm. and uh, you know already in Texas you've had um, uh, because they had a, a competition for who could draw the most offensive picture oh, of right. the Prophet yes, Muhammad yes. or Terrible. something or something ridiculous yeah like yeah right like shouldn't what? have been doing that anyways but. Um, you know, this was, uh, you know, a sort of incendiary thing that oh, they did, sure. and then and then they had an incendiary response to it, and it just kind of seems like that escalation is kind of starting to happen again. And I, I hope I'm wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was a uh, another uh, kind of event somewhere in the American Southwest this summer. Um, I think that's very real. You know, um, unfortunately, I, I have to depart if you um, you can do your closing words or whatever. But I had a pleasure. And let's uh, let's do this again, my friend. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, the uh, the position is yours if you want it. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know uh, if you're uh, I, I, I have a lot on my plate, but I really enjoyed this. So let's do another episode for sure. As did I. And it was a pleasure. Uh, it's a, it's a pleasure, doing pleasure speaking with you this evening. Uh, farewell. <laughs> Goodbye, folks at home. And uh, uh, I'll uh, leave you guys to finish up. Fair enough. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, that uh, is pretty much. I know we keep uh, we keep missing the uh, the 1984 interview uh, as we are uh, running out of uh, time once again. But uh, what a, a great time this evening! I want to uh, thank anyone who is tuning in for doing so. Thank you very much, um, and I also want to thank uh, Mr. Vince Eckert, uh, my. Uh, guest co-host for the evening hopefully we'll uh, have more opportunities to do that in the future and uh, so we're going to be uh, coming to you with more uh, stuff next week and uh, and I promise more of it will be new this time so <laughs> so definitely tune in uh, I'll plan some good stuff for you good night good luck uh, and uh, wherever you're going get there safe